Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Monday, January 4th, 2016, and Happy New Year. Good morning, Commissioners Davis, Rodriguez, James, Repenning, and Jacinto are present. We have a quorum. Would the Bureau representatives introduce themselves? Good morning, Chris Smith, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Hector Manuelo, Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Dan Myers, Bureau of Sanitation. Kendrick Okuda, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Fabian Cheng, Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. And Terry Schmidt, Board Assistant Executive Officer. I have speaker cards for one, all the items, public comments and one through seven. Okay, thank you. Um, our first item of business, the approval of the meeting minutes from the meeting of Monday, December 7th, 2015. Is there a second to my motion to approve those meeting minutes by Commissioner Rodriguez? Any objection? With that objection, those meeting minutes will be approved. Colleagues, um, the Bureau is requesting that we continue agenda item number six to this Wednesday, six, um, the, uh, regarding uh, the Sixth Street Bridge, this Wednesday, uh, I'm sorry, continuing it from today to Wednesday, January 6, 2015. Any objections? Uh, I'm sorry, did I say 2015? Okay, let's, let's, let's make the record clear. <laughs> The Bureau is requesting that agenda item number six be continued from today to Wednesday, January 6, 2016. Uh, any objection? With that objection, that will be continued. Agenda item number one, Bureau of Engineering for Council Districts 6 and 7, recommending the board authorize the city engineer to issue an emergency change order number 14 to John S. Meek Company Incorporated for a not to exceed amount of $745,330 to construct 15 additional dry wells in connection with the Sun Valley Economic Development Administration EDA Public Improvement Project. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number one. Yes. Good to start the year off with an emergency. Because when there's an emergency, the money doesn't matter. The only thing that matters when there's an emergency, to quote the late Commissioner Sabo when he used to be alive here, the work must get done. So $745,335 to construct 15 additional dry wells. And of course, what are dry wells? Well, nobody knows what they are public improvements, Sun Valley. We know Sun Valley, we know that's in CD6, and the, the, the north part is in CD7. So I failed, to, because I didn't have time this morning, I wanted to see how many campaign donations were made by the, the John S. Meek Company from 1999 to 2016, 1416. But anyway, I hope that they made enough campaign donations because you have to do that to get these things approved. Otherwise, they don't get approved, but we're standing here today, so you know it's going to be a 5 nothing vote because everything is a 5 nothing vote. This is just a dog and pony show. <laughs> so we're just here just to have fun. It'll be approved, $745,330 for something called 15 additional dry wells. Well, how many dry wells do we have? And again, it's an emergency. Life could be lost, people could be killed by explosions. And so I recommend we get this done forthwith. The council's on recess. So you'll, you'll have to take these funds out of your budget directly to fund it and send an IOU to Herb J. Wesson Jr. He's up on the fourth floor. He'll be back next week and he will reimburse you for that money I'm plus interest. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Uh, Carl De La Fuente. Good morning, sir. Good morning, commissioners, uh, bureau representatives, Mr. Jordan, Mrs. Smith. Um, I want to thank the opportunity to be here. A, I come in just to request authority to the board for the city engineer to approve these uh, emergency change orders for the amount of $745,000, and on March 26, 2015, the Board of Public Works authorized the award for this contract to John Smith. This contract was a structure in two phases. One, it was a 
with the Economic Development Agency, which was a public improvements. At the other phase, it was the installation of uh, originally 31 dry wells. Okay, I will explain later what it means these or oh, these kind of structures. But um, the difference between the low bid and the city engineer at the time that we bid it created and savings around eight hundred thousand dollars. So we consulted with our partners with Palmer Water and Power, which they funded $2.4 million part of this award, just to make sure what exactly they want to do it. Do they want to get it back to them or actually use it in additional infrastructure? The direction was from the Director of Water Resources for the Palmer Water and Power to use all these funds in additional dry wells to the extent of how many would be possible. The assessment for the Bureau of Engineering was to add additionally 15. In a letter, on September 30th for the Department of Water and Power, they approved the solicitation to direct the Bureau of Engineering to proceed with those additional 15 are looking forward to this development. Uh, knowing that to the extent of this a large change order was huge, we consulted with Commissioner Jacinto verbally, our senior engineer, Jean Edwards, in October 14. Consequently, the day after October 15, we got an email directly from Commissioner Hassington approving the request for the large children, <coughs> excuse me, and um, proceeding forward because as we knew that the time in order to proceed with all the developments and protocols requiring you know, to approve the children will be quite burdensome. And uh, the, constru the construction is ongoing and due to the upcoming rainy season, it was essential you know, to move it forward. Therefore, we got that approval. So therefore, the board report has been approved and we're requesting the such authority to move forward and uh, proceed correspondingly. If there are any other questions corresponding to what are those dry wells, I have with me our partners, the Department of Water and Power, that we're more than welcome to explain what are those for and what is the reason that they direct us to do so. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. De La Fuente. Uh, Commissioner Repenning. Um, I just have a couple questions about sure. the origin of, of this project and the how you, how you guys ended up deciding to add more. Uh, and mainly, I mean, I'm very supportive. Um, I think there's a lot of work being done to try to get to the point where, as a city, we're more systematically, um, you know, looking at every opportunity to address stormwater in, the, in, in our own uh, projects in the public right-of-way. So I just wonder, with this one, how did you guys initially flag it for as a, as a dry well project, and then, how did, and then how did you end up deciding to add the additional ones that we're looking at here today. That's quite an interesting question, Commissioner Repenny, I appreciate that. Okay, the <clears throat> and the later stages of our, the design of this project, the Department of Water and Power approach of your engineering and light to a, the existing aquifer, which was beneficial for them to do this kind of exchange. They came up a point, I would say, uh, Equilibrium will say that eight dry wells will pay for the investment of $2.4 million, will largely exceed that amount, okay? And they can see as economic benefit to our more dry wells for the investment being done because the projections correspond to the amount of water to import for the Colorado River or the San Joaquin Delta or in other areas, which will be border so in the near future, especially for the drought, especially here in the state of California. That it was mainly the, dry, the driven factor why a, the Department of Water and Power directors, you know, to include this additional 15. Other than that, they have, you know, the direction, you know, to return their, their, their funding because that was part of the uh, memorandum understanding with them. Okay. Sure. And, uh, an additional question, how much water are we going to be actually capturing out of this? Do okay, that's a quite an interesting technical question. The assessment is uh, around 900 gallons per minute for the 46 dry well system, around 54,000 gallons in an hour to make it quite clear is in, a, in an installment event of eight hours, we're going to capture one acre foot. That's very much the uh, in, a permeation that we have the water percolation directly to the uh, large aquifer in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, could you allow me you know, to bring our partners about water and power? Perhaps they can give you more perspective. Rafael Villegas is with us today. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, it's, it's very excited about this opportunity uh, to see this project through uh, to completion. Now, to answer your questions in terms of, of how much water will be captured, initially we planned for 31 dry wells, and um, I used to work in the same uh, offices as Carl and the street improvement uh, group, 
And so what I did is I looked for existing projects, ongoing projects that were, that were going out and see if we, could, if we were able to piggyback. And uh, so I approached, um, I approached um, uh, Michael Brown, which was the last division manager there. And he said, um, sure. And so we worked out the logistics on being able to transfer the funding and all that. And again, since the, since the uh, bids came in a lot lower, we saw this as an opportunity to, to, to then augment uh, the stormwater capture to help us to help the Department of Water and Power meet our, st our local stormwater capture goals. Uh, the tributary area that we calculated was about 150 acres. And with the, we fit in as many dry wells as we could. We probably need close to about 100 dry wells to capture the 85th percentile storm. Uh, but because of all the utilities and meters, water meters and power poles and stuff that are out there and driveways, it makes it difficult to fit in. So we fit in as many as, as we could and even opened up to additional areas. And what we think is we can probably capture about 50% um, about of the 85th percentile storm. Um, and that translates in an annual basis, assuming an average rain year of about uh, 100 acre feet a year. So, so uh, if we had, if we would have had more opportunities, we would have tried to put in more. Uh, we see the streets as, as they're, they're basically rivers that carry water, and it's a, a good opportunity uh, to to intercept this water before it reaches receiving waters and put it into the aquifer. Well, then it becomes part of the water supply. And sir, would you just state your name for the record? So, we oh, I'm sorry, uh, Rafael Viegas, um, LA Department of Water and Power. Thank you. Commissioner Asinto. Thank you. Rafael, can you uh, compute that 100 acre feet per year? Per year. Would be, how many gallons would that be? Um, it's 325,000 gallons per acre foot. So I guess just add two zeros to that, so about 30 million gallons. Apologize, we work in acre feet since the uh, numbers are so large. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. Great. This construction project, this project will expand our capacity to capture the water, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So the original project, we're, we're basically increasing the capacity by about 50% because we're going from an original 31 uh, dry wells to uh, an additional 15 for a total of 46. And even in fact with this construction, there still is some more opportunity if in fact we had the resources to do so to capture even more right correct Actually, so correct. so the department of water and power we we look at um, capturing uh, stormwater capture projects from the large centralized projects like the spreading facilities that the county operates uh, to the sub-regional uh, like uh, what you put in in um, in uh, rec and parks facilities to capture from a neighborhood uh, to to then is the next level down would be like these where we do uh, capture along the actual parkway. Uh, and then we also look at projects that do parcel based uh, stormwater capture. So there's opportunities uh, um, up and down the spectrum of the types of projects that are, that, are, that are out there. We just saw this as an opportunity to piggyback on an existing project as opposed to developing a project from scratch, uh, which would take a lot more logistics and planning and so forth. And you know, I just want to say thank you to the Bureau of Engineering. Um, their professionalism it, it just has, has, has been a very smooth process in, in getting this implemented. And I'd like to just acknowledge their efforts. So basically, in summary, by implementing this project, we feel very strongly that it will give us a bigger potential to capture uh, more storm water than we currently are and putting us in a more effective area of management of our capturing of storm water in this region. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. So you, we, we saw this specific tributary area. When, when, we, when we scope our projects, we use uh, different criteria. One, is it over our aquifer? Uh, two, is it areas that we can overlay with, with other things that are going on? For example, the Great Streets Initiative. Uh, is there plans for a future storm drain there? So, so this street actually uh, was identified as one for a future uh, flood CIP uh, where, where, where it's been it's been identified as in the future, at some point in the future, a storm drain needs to go through here because the area floods. So, so our reasoning is, well, instead of putting in a storm drain, why don't we try and capture that water and put it in the ground uh, where we can then reuse it. Thank you. So we, we want to be able to do this throughout the Northeast Valley, which is where, where the uh, excellent soils are. 
and and so you know again we're going to keep looking at these opportunities to try and expand uh, we recently completed a stormwater capture master plan uh, that as part of our mo modeling told us that uh, these types of green streets uh, distributed capture uh, will be the workhorse for for the the type of capture that we need to do to meet our goals thank you commissioner rodriguez just because you mentioned the Northeast San Fernando Valley, one of the criteria that you're also utilizing, I think, is, is also the flood zones, where we have a tremendous amount of some of our roadways that I know in along Sheldon and along a number of areas uh, that uh, previously have a lot of dry wells that have been installed. So is that part of the investigative work that is being identified for these locations as well? Uh, correct. So so we've identified, so we, we received the GIS data from, from Bureau of Sanitation and Bureau of Engineering of where these future flood projects are going. Uh, and we, we took that and then look at what the tributary area there is and then how many dry wells would we need to capture the 85th percentile storm. So we went through there and we did identify them. And actually, um, several months ago, we did execute a, an MOU with Bureau of Sanitation for $15 million to build five green streets. So, so those were initiated by the Department of Water and Power that approached sanitation and said, hey, we have five projects. Can, you, can, can we partner and put these, these projects in? So um, we're going to keep trying to do more of the similar work. This, this one happened on a more expedited basis because it was already uh, moving forward. So this is the first large scale drywall installation that, that, that I've been a part of. Anything further for either of these gentlemen? Is there a motion on agenda by Commissioner uh, Sinto, seconded by Commissioners uh, Rodriguez and Repenning? Any objection? <clears throat> Without objection, agenda item number one will be adopted. Any problem sending it forthwith? We'll send number one forthwith. Thank you both. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay. Agenda item number two, Bureau of Contract Administration and Bureau of Engineering for Council District 4, requested contract acceptance for Crescent Drive, west of Wonderland, bulkheads and grading project, completed by John S. Meek Company, Incorporated. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number two. Well, this is uh, the Wonderland, the Wonderland School District, we all know, Crescent Drive, poor, poor neighborhood. A lot of African Americans living there, in a very poor neighborhood in CD4. And I know when I drive through there and I go through Crescent Drive and Wonderland up there, I, I see the poverty up there. Now today, we're going to end that. Today we're going to go and we're going to give John S. Meek Company, that may be related to the John S. Meek Company, Inc., on item one, the permission to do the bulkhead and grading projects. Now, when I went ahead and I checked the Ethics Commission, I didn't find a single campaign donation by John S. Meek Company to this no good, filthy city council and their campaign donations. Not a dollar. So I like what John S. Meek is doing because they're not paying to play. Must be a damn good company because if you don't pay to play, like we're going to find out on, the, on a couple of agenda items coming up, you're going to be crucified like Jesus. But this company, not a single campaign donation by John S. Meek to any of these council cretins, mayor, nothing. They're clean, ethically clean. A company that's ethically clean of the filth of City Hall. But on CD4, that's, we have a new representative, Councilman Roo, and Councilman Rue is going into that district to undo the damage caused by Tom LaBonge and the evil witch Carolyn Ramsey. And together, they're going to start repairing the damage. So yes, approve item two, and good Time. for John S. Meek. No campaign donations, man. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spindler. On uh, agenda item number two, we have a representative, Chris. Good morning, Chris Smith, Bureau of Contract Administration, General Services Division. Uh, this, the Bureau is recommending acceptance of this contract. Uh, this project built essentially some retaining walls and did some grading to provide erosion control on Crescent Drive. Um, there are no 
there were no specific outreach requirements on this because this was done off the geotechnical on-call emergency list. Uh, so there are no, and all, in addition, there are no unresolved property issues or financial issues, and the Bureau recommends acceptance. Thank you. Any questions on agenda item number two? Um, I'll make a motion along with Commissioner Rodriguez. Um, uh, is there a second by Commissioner Repenning? Uh, any objection to adopting agenda item number two? No objection. Agenda item number two will be adopted. Any problem sending it forthwith? We'll send number two forthwith. Thank you, Chris. Agenda item number three, Bureau of Street Lighting and Bureau of Contract Administration for Council District 4. Street Lighting Conduit Only Project Unit 2 recommending the board declare Comet Electric Incorporated the first low bidder to be non-responsive for failing to pass the business inclusion program outreach evaluation and declare the second low bidder to be the lowest responsive responsible bidder and award a contract in the amount of $1,378,600 to KDC Incorporated doing business as Dyna Electric. Ms. McGlinchey? Oh, I'm sorry, before you start, <laughs> Mr. Spindler has a card on number three. My apologies to both of you. Yes, the first crucifixion of this morning's meeting. Comet Electric, how much was the bid? You don't want to tell us how much the bid was. They were the first low bidder. But now, shame on Comet Electric. The last donation they made, February 15, 2000, they gave $1,000 to the campaign fund of the late Kenneth Hahn Jr., James Hahn. Since t February 2000, they haven't seen almost 16 years a single dollar of campaign donations by Comet Electric to this city. Shame, 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 because you have to have those campaign donations. That's too long. And now, some bullshit called the Business Inclusion Program Outreach Evaluation is the reason we're losing this. This guy can't go and pass the Business Inclusion Program Outreach Evaluation. Bull. If he was a campaign donator currently, he could get a waiver for that or an extension. So how much was his bid? Now we get to the second guy because there's another guy, KDC. Can't find any campaign donations there. Dyna Electric, can't find any campaign donations there. But, you know, when you got to deal with this city, you can't go 15, 16 years without putting that grease in those wheels. You can't do that because you got to pay to play. Because somebody nitpicked, got into this little thing called the Business Inclusion Program. Everything was set. Hey, but the, the Business Inclusion Program outreach, item number 900 on the list. You forgot to check the box and pass the evaluation. So you lose the bid, right? It's like dealing with the Cosa Nostra of the city. It's like dealing with the mafia. You can't even put down on the agenda what the lowest bid really was Time. because you don't want to tell us. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Ms. McGlinchey. Good morning and Happy New Year. Linda McGlinchey, Bureau of Contract Administration. Ms. McGlinchey, for the record, what was the bid amount of Comet Electric? Per the board report, page two, Comet Electric bid $1,498,167.19. And what was the, the uh, bid amount of Dyn Electric? $1,378,600. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So, KDC was the apparent low bidder. However, the city does have a local business preference program. And... Uh, as outlined on page three, we applied the program. Comedy Electric is an LBE, and that resulted uh, with their LBE percentage of 8% being applied. Their adjusted bid amount for evaluation purposes was less than $300 below KDC, which made them the first low bidder. So when evaluating their bid proposal for the business inclusion program, 
we found that they had not modified their summary sheet, their uh, business inclusion program summary sheet on the on the Bobbin, the business assistance virtual network, which is a requirement. Uh, Could you talk about the importance of the summary sheet? The summary sheet shows how they did or did not negotiate in good faith with regards to all subcontractor bids received. In this case, uh, the day after bids were received, staff had notified all bidders on this project as a courtesy to remind them that they did need to complete their summary sheet online by 4.30 p.m. The following, the, the, um, that day. Uh, we did not hear anything. Staff subsequently notified Comedy Electric that they had not uh, modified their summary sheet and we were therefore recommending that they be found non-responsive for failing their BIP evaluation. They did contact us back and ask what it was that they erred in. Staff informed them of the error and as an example showed them two other uh, BIP summary sheets that they had completed for previous projects and that that was the end of that they n uh, Did not respond back to us other other than a thank you for the information So therefore we're recommending that they be found non-responsive and the award go to KDC Mr. Rodriguez Hi Linda you actually now uh, addressed one of the questions that I had is that they have previously applied for uh, or they have bid on projects previously and they've actually neglected to fulfill the BIP requirements on other efforts as Correct. well. Correct. They, they have met the requirements on other projects. Has there been a conversation with them in terms of what they're missing on, on actually fulfilling these requirements that they're, I mean, they're missing out on some opportunities <coughs> here, so. Uh, not not a specific conversation as to why they didn't do it, um, but but yeah, we definitely. I mean, it just seems that this is a pattern where they continue to fail and miss an opportunity to have. I I I can't say that they. I don't remember or recall if they've done this before, as far as not not completing the BIP summary sheet. Didn't you indicate that they had? No, they they had completed it. They had fulfilled the required requirement before. on okay. two other recent okay. projects. Okay, perfect. So then they know they're they, fully Yes, they know, they know what they need to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Davis? No, um, it appears that it was, if I'm correct, uh, unfair uh, to Dime Electric that in fact, Comet who got the contract and did not fulfill their obligation uh, then got that credit that was not due to them, correct? Yes. Any further questions or comments on agenda item number three? Um, I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number three as recommended by the Bureau of Contract Administration, seconded by Commissioner Rodriguez. Uh, any objection? <clears throat> Without objection, we'll adopt number three. Uh, any problem sending it back forthwith? We'll send number three forthwith. Thank you, Ms. McGlinchey. Happy Thank New you. Year. Agenda item number four. Bureau of Contract Administration and Bureau of Engineering. This is continued from November 30th, 2015, Council Districts 1 and 13. Requested contract acceptance, secondary sewer renewal program, N12 Parkview Street and Beverly Boulevard. Completed by Kolich and Sons, or Kolich and Sons LP, recommending the board assess the contractor a penalty in the amount of $59,454 for violations of the city's project labor agreement and assess the contract rate penalty in the amount of $13,000 for liquidated damages in accordance with the specifications for the contract. Mr. Spender, you have a card on number four. Yes, the second crucifixion for this morning. 2001 to 2003, college. Lots of money. 2003 to 2008, only one campaign donation of $500 to Alex Padilla. 2008 and 2009, $1,000 to the campaign of Paul Koretz, which, by the way, David Vahetti was the right choice. However, since 2009, not a single dollar of campaign booty 
So that's why today we're here again, this is the second time, to assess this company, this ridiculous criminal penalty of $13,000, and then to throw another $59,454 back to punish Kolich and Sons for not donating to campaigns more. That's what it is. And I wish we'd just be honest about it. Let's come out of the closet what we really are here in Los Angeles. Let's come out of the closet. They're being fined because they didn't give enough campaign dollars. That's the reason they're being fined. Just like the other man that loses the bid, Comet Electric, for not checking a box on a fucking survey. Now this person here, he's not campaign donating enough. So they have to recapture the lost campaign donations and that's your $60,000. They'd pay it as long as you'd admit why. But you're not going to admit why. You're going to come up with excuses of things that are called project labor agreements and things called the, the business inclusion program outreach. It's all garbage, lies. We have the highest unemployment rate of any metropolitan major city in the United States. We're not creating jobs, we're driving out jobs. We're driving out people like Kolich and Sons that could be creating jobs in our city because it's an economic terrorist environment. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Uh, Mr. Jensen, just to summarize and bring us up to speed, Mr. Jensen, this was continued from November 30th, 2015, and at that time, there was agreement um, from all parties on the assessment of the liquidated damages amount of $13,000, correct? Correct. And then the decision was made regarding the $59,454 to send the parties back to negotiate amongst themselves and see if they could come to an agreed upon amount from which some basis were agreed and returned today, correct? That is correct also. And we are yes. here today. Yes. Good morning. Go ahead, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Jensen. I am with the Bureau of Contract Administration, Office of Contract Compliance. Um, you have summed up exactly what so, happened. So the issue before us is not liquidated damages, it's the other number. No, it's the, the $59,454. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you did direct that the two parties most knowledgeable, most involved meet, that would be Kolich and the Office of Contract Compliance. We did, we met on December 16th, and I'm very happy to tell you that we did work out a compromise that all sides agreed to and, and made sense. Uh, the, the bottom line of that is uh, Kolich will concede the sum of $16,000 to the city. Now, that is based on the following. Kolich started their work in earnest on the project on November 21st of 2012. They did not have a jobs coordinator at that time. On December 19th of that year, Don Kolich sent an email advising the Office of Contract Compliance that they had a jobs coordinator. They had, uh, they had accepted one at that point. Uh, standard verification and approval time takes three days. That put it at December 22nd. And from November 21st to December 22nd is 32 days. Using the $500 per day penalty from the project labor agreement, that gives us a total of $16,000. That's how we came up with the $16,000. Uh, Kolich currently has two projects with the city. One has just begun. The other is at nearly 90% completion. They are well aware of the issues and have given repeated assurances that they are going to meet their goals on this. And I can tell you currently, as of this morning, uh, we checked, they are uh, meeting all of their project labor agreement goals. Their local hire is at 30.44%, so just slightly over what it needs to be. Their local apprentice is at 85.4%. They are way above what they need to be doing there. That's exemplary. And their disadvantaged worker is at 21.4%, more than double what they need to do. So, Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Commissioner Davis. Um, I think that 
all parties were in agreement with the, obviously, with the, with the recommendation here. Yes. Uh, it looks like you have followed the instructions of the board in terms of a consensual decision. And uh, while I had initially in our first deliberation talked about, uh, I thought 15,000 was reasonable, but it appears that you have a formula that makes good sense and it's fair and just as well. So I can support the solution that uh, the group collectively has come up with. Anything further? I'll second Commissioner, da Commissioner Penny. I'll second Commissioner Davis's uh, motion. A any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda Thank item you. number four. Um, any problem sending it back forth with? Thank you, Mr. Jensen, for the additional work, and please send the message to college representatives as well. I appreciate the time they took to work with you on that. <clears throat> agenda item number five, a motion uh, from the Bureau of Engineering and Council District 6, recommending that the board approve and execute the right of entry agreement with Keys Motors for temporary non-exclusive access onto city-owned property located at the corner of Oxnard Street and Vesper Avenue for the purposes of storing cars. Uh, Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number five. Oh, this is a good guy here. Keys Toyota, 1999 to 2015, 57,900 in campaign donations. And $1,500 from Keys Motors. However, Keys Toyota, Keys, 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 and Van Eyes. That's the one that runs the commercials. That's a powerful fucking company, okay? Now, Keys... Keys is a little different from our little friends like Kolich and Comet and DBA and me. We're just nothing. You screw with Keys Corporation, and I'm going to tell you something. You guys will be picking up garbage on Thursdays over at Encino. <laughs> yeah. So I would just, man, I wouldn't even have a debate about this. They want to park cars on that lot over there in Oxnard at Vesper. You better give it to them. Because I'm telling you, man, CD6, Nuri Martinez, she got a lot of nice campaign donations from that company. That company's powerful. That company is as powerful as Russia, okay? If I was going to bet on a war between Keys Toyota and Keys Motor Company in Russia, I'd bet on Keys, okay? So I would say you should amend the motion, though, to give them ownership of the entire lot for $1 a year. So... You should amend a motion to give them access for $1 a year for the next 30 years and give them exclusivity. That way they would clean it up and repave it because it looks like a piece of shit. I've been over there at that lot. It looks like a piece of shit, but Keys would repave it, clean it up, and make it look wonderful. Excellent dealer, powerful company. Give them the whole thing Time. for a dollar a year. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Uh, I Alan Caligucci, is Alan? Oh, there you are. Alan, I didn't see you. Agenda item number five. Good morning, President James, Commissioners, Bureau Heads, Mr. Jordan, this is Executive. Uh, my name's Alan Caligucci. I'm the Program Manager over Prop F and Prop uh, Q uh, bond programs for the Bureau of Engineering. What's before you today is a right of entry uh, for Keys Toyota to store cars and only store cars uh, on a month-to-month -month basis uh, for a cost, a monthly fee of $16,700. Um, this is at the location of 14615 uh, Oxnard Street. This is the future plan location of Fire Station 39. Um, the right of entry is only to allow Keys Toyota to store cars on the lot. There's no public access allowed on the lot. Um, as well as they will maintain the lot and the fence. And it can be to this uh, right of entry can be terminated within 30 days uh, by either party. Uh, the right of entry is beneficial to both Keys Toyota and to the city. Uh, one of the reasons is, if you can see from the map, is that it's adjacent to their uh, Toyota dealership. The other advantages to the city is that right now the, the uh, program who bought the piece of property has to maintain the fence. So we go out there on a basically almost monthly tour this thing, mend the fence, we have to do weed abatement and everything else uh, to keep it somewhat, you know, looking decent. Uh, Keys Toyota will take care of all that for us. So I think it's a win-win on both sides. Uh, 
Uh, so, Mr. Um, Kelaguchi, so the the sixteen thousand seven hundred dollars per month uh, was when that was negotiated with Keys was the city's cost of maintaining the property, for lack of a better term. Was that something that was utilized in the city's, uh, on our side of the negotiations, uh, determination of the amount to uh, either request or to agree to for the charge of the lot? Actually, it, that wasn't used. What we did uh, is this is the cost that, that they, they had previously had, had used this property before uh, when it was owned by the Department of Water and Power, and that was the amount that they paid for, to them at the time, and so we just agreed to continue that amount. How on. long ago? That was about uh, three years ago. Um, and the who negotiated this? Sec how long did they use it last time? They had used. I'm not sure the time that they, how long they had used it the last time. Any indication? I recognize it's a month to month. Correct. So either side, with 30 days notice, can uh, terminate the agreement. That is correct. Has there been any indication as to um, an expectation or an estimate as to how long the month to month will go? We, have, we expect the month-to-month -month, uh, lease to probably go no longer than, than probably about nine months. At this point, Fire Station 39, the CEQA document, is, in, is going to be released very soon, and we're hoping to start construction by middle part of, of uh, summer. And we'll be ahead with the 30 days notice for when we need it? Absolutely. Commissioner Repenning? Um, do we know where the funds being generated are being directed? The funds for this, because a piece of property was bought by Proposition F bond funds, the money will be placed back into the, those coffers to replenish, to replace the money that was used to uh, purchase the property. It offsets it. Anything further? Uh, Commissioner Rodriguez has moved to approve. Seconded by Commissioner Asento. Any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number five. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. No problem sending it forthwith. We'll send it forthwith. Um, agenda item number six has been continued. Agenda item number seven, oral report regarding the status of consultant contracts from the Bureaus of Engineering and Sanitation. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number seven. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Mr. Spindler has exhausted his 10 minutes of speaking on uh, mm. board items. Okay, the thank board, you. Yeah. Mr. Okuda. Good morning, Kendra morning. Okuda, Bureau of Engineering. I'm going to give my report from the mic here. Um, the Bureau of Engineering is reporting that we're going to extend, uh, need to extend one contract um, that's going to expire uh, 120 days from January 4th, 2016. It's a contract to Fisher, Siegel, and Yanez that's providing architectural, engineering, and construction management services for the following three projects, the Vision Theater Manchester Junior Art Center, the Lincoln Pool and Bathhouse Replacement Project, and finally, the Manchester Junior Arts Center. Uh, I do want to note that the authorized amount for the contract is $3,883,858. And the Bureau does intend to extend this contract another four years to March 2020. Has it been previously extended? Um, that I don't know. OK, do you know if this is the final extension uh, uh, allowed in the contract? Yes. OK, go ahead. Um, that completes my, my comments on the matter. Okay. Nothing from sanitation, Dan? Okay. Any questions regarding the, uh, uh, either, the, either bureau? Okay, thank you. The oral report will be received. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, general public comment? Mr. Spindler, you have a card on general public comment. Well, going out to the San Fernando Valley, I found this lovely sidewalk here. Looks like, looks like the shape of, a, of the top of a roof, but that's actually a sidewalk, and that's over there on Satakoy Street near DeSoto. And as you see, the person walking over it is not Jewish, but a Latina, see? So that's what I've been talking about. CD3 and CD12, whenever it's the Latino areas, they don't get street services. That's what I kept telling you last time, that, you know, when we left on the 15th, we had Negro Street Services Day. Now we have to have Latino Street Services Day and to get this fixed. How many years has that street been like that? How many times have those constituents called their councilmen? How many times have they begged, please fix our sidewalk? Look at that sidewalk. You could launch a goddamn 
tree. You could launch a plane off of that. That looks like a plane runway. Looks like something the skateboarders would have at a skateboard park. That's a sidewalk. That's a sidewalk in an area of the San Fernando Valley where people pay so many taxes and get nothing in return for it. Unless, of course, you're over in the Wonderland area, that poor area that was on the agenda today. This is disgusting. Now, I would go to the councilman's office, but I know they don't give a damn. So, you're the street services people. I suggest, before the next Latina walks over that and breaks her neck, I suggest that that get fixed. That's over there. Just go to DeSoto and Satakoy. Now, I know you'll have to have a police escort because that's a poor area. You wouldn't want to drive there alone. You know, I'm sure you upper class people don't go there. But it used to be a nice area until all of city policy started destroying all the jobs and getting rid of all the companies that used to be in Northridge. When I was growing up in the 80s, you couldn't move on that street. There were so many jobs from all of the Time. contractors. Now look at it. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Um, Madam Executive Officer, we cleared the desk? Yes. And then we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year.